It's going well, Trisha. Thanks. Yep, I'm here in the basement of Hager Hall in the Sleep, Stress, and Memory Lab with Dr. Jessica Payne, the Nancy O'Neill Collegiate Chair in Psychology here at Notre Dame. Dr. Payne, thank you for joining us. Let me start out by asking, why do we need sleep? Well, we need sleep for a lot of different reasons. There are probably too many to count, but as you're going to hear about today, sleep is probably most important for the brain and especially all the cognitive functions it supports, so memory, creativity, emotions and emotion regulation, a whole host of different types of performance depend on sleep, and that's what we're evaluating here in the lab. Yeah, and so tell me a little bit more about your research and what exactly you guys do down here. Right, so we're the Sleep Stress and Memory Laboratory, so what these guys are doing over here, which you'll see in a second, is looking at how sleep supports memory function. And we're particularly interested in the ability of people to, to um, form emotional memories. So that's what this study is doing tonight. But I'd say the broader goal of the lab is to look at how sleep and stress interact to influence all types of different um, performance. So I'm sure many of you have had this experience before where sleep and stress are definitely related, right? Like maybe you're really stressed out about an exam or about anything, and that makes it very difficult to sleep. And the more stressed you are, the harder it is to sleep. It's also true that sleep deprivation is a really pronounced stressor. There's a reason that some people use it as a torture technique. So um, sleep deprivation leads to very high levels of cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And so these two things are just, you get into a very vicious cycle where the more poorly you sleep, the more stressed you are, the more stressed you are, the more poorly you sleep. And so we're really trying to understand those interactions and how they support or don't support cognitive function. All right, awesome. Well, let's head over here to grad student Steve Mattingly, who actually has a student hooked up here. So tell me about this setup. What's going on here? Okay, so we are going to have this participant sleep in the lab tonight. Uh, as you can see, we've attached several electrodes across the head, face, and chin. Uh, we collect brain waves from the top part, we collect eye movement from the eye part, and we collect muscle movement from the chin. This lets us know which stage of sleep participants are in and when. Uh, so we'll be recording them overnight, give them eight and a half hours of sleep, and hopefully they'll wake up well refreshed and ready to go for tomorrow. Okay, and you say you have them stay here overnight. What if they can't sleep? Well, we've never in three years had anyone not be able to fall asleep within about 10 minutes. College kids are very energetic and they're very tired when they need to go to bed. Take away the screens, you take away the lights, people fall asleep pretty quickly. All right. And is it just students here at Notre Dame who can participate or where do you find your participants? Our main participant block is the students, but we are looking for subjects up to uh, age 40 or so. Uh, if anyone's interested in a study, they can contact us at ndsamlab at gmail.com. All right, thank you so much. And Dr. Payne, thank you so much for joining us. Now we're going to send it back out to Cassidy. Cassidy?